Welcome to the Couch Time Podcast, where we give you tools to connect with your kid and point them to Jesus. I'm Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Aaron. I'm, I'm Steven, and Ryan's reading the intro. Welcome to the Couch Time Podcast. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I confess I don't have it memorized. Read it. I respect it. Thank you. I just, I just want to get it right. Okay, today, mm. we've got something <laughs> special for you. We've got two topics that we're going to throw on your radar that might be relevant to you as parents for you to discuss, have a conversation with your kids about. And the first is uh, a gentleman I want to talk about today, and it is in honor of his holiday, which is today, which confession we recorded this on Monday. It didn't, it, we, we had some technical difficulties, so we're revisiting it. We would have liked for it, this to have been prepared, but we're giving it to you today. And it is St. Patrick. Because it's still worth talking about, yeah? Yeah, so it's good. So you'll still have time to talk about it. It's releasing on Wednesday for St. Patrick's Day. But I want to talk about this man because he has a very interesting history that i want to revisit but steven if i were to have asked you last week what is saint patrick's day <laughs> Dude, okay. what would your response have been first off so sad that we're not all just like decked out in saint patrick's day gear we yeah really, we should have done that Tough. but my response if you'd asked me uh, a couple days ago i'm an expert now some would call me um <laughs> would be that i knew nothing about saint patrick's day other than that it was a day that people party Mm -hmm. celebrate wear green there's beads involved sometimes tall hats leprechauns Martyr gold beads? i think he's referring to green mardi gras beads. Yeah, that's mardi gras <laughs> but there are they I mean, sell them for saint patrick's day too that's, that's, maybe i know more true. about the it kiosk at kroger <laughs> the kiosk at kroger there's a bunch of green yeah so green leprechauns gold and a person named saint patrick who has to do with clovers I'm not sure why all right it's good and and some things are true some things are way off all right so <laughs> Especially the beads. Okay. Let us know what you think about the beads. Uh, okay. But I, I like St. Patrick. Um, did a little research on this guy, and he has got a crazy history. Okay. So, I and I asked my wife this. She didn't think St. Patrick was a real human being. I was like, yes, he is real. He existed. Yeah, he was born late 3rd century. And uh, many people associate him with being Irish. He was actually British. Hmm. But here's where his story gets crazy. When he was 16 years old, he was abducted by Irish pirates, um, which is a, yeah. So he was, he was stolen from his homeland in Ireland by some pirates, and he was taken captive, and he was held captive for, I think it was six years wow. in Ireland, where these people who stole him away um, had him work as a shepherd, basically, as labor. And so... Uh, Patrick was not a Christian, a believer when he was abducted, but it was during his time, um, in captivity in Ireland when he had tons of free time to himself, where he prayed and became a believer. He ended up, did long... he have like mm -hmm. a background of understanding, uh, like where did he even learn who Jesus was? He, I, we're not, I don't actually know that. I think he kind of had like a vague idea. I, I think I'd read that his dad was technically, like a priest, hmm. but they th they question the sincerity of his faith and that maybe he was doing it for financial purposes. So I think he had an idea, kind of new, but it was during his time in captivity where he prayed, had a vision, or just had like a, a, a God moment revealed himself. God him. revealed yeah. himself and he believed. So he ended up having a, a, another, God told him to try and escape, go back to... Uh, to Britain. He was there, I think, for 25 years, got an education, and then felt called to go back to Ireland. To his so captain he, as well. He ends up going back to Ireland and um, essentially becomes a missionary in Ireland. And I think what people, what I did not realize is that at, during that time, this is in the 400s, Ireland was predominantly a pagan country. So polytheistic, no semblance of, you know, monotheism, the God of the Bible, who Jesus is, and Patrick comes in and, uh, yeah, becomes an evangelist. That's crazy. And you said this is like the fifth century or something like that. Fifth century, yes, yeah, is when he, when he, uh, majority of his life. Yes, That's crazy. So, ends up, uh, yeah, sort of flipping that country and establishing the 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 Irish Church, uh, pretty early on in the history of Christianity. Um, so early, a couple. I mean, I I did not know this, but technically. St. Patrick was never canonized officially as a saint. Hmm. That structure of how the Catholic Church determined who's a saint, who's not, did not develop till about, I think it was around the 1100s or 1200s, so several hundred years after Patrick's 
uh, life. So it's interesting. So yeah, so I, I think that's a it's a helpful history and even something to think about with this holiday beyond just wearing green and leprechauns. It's it's really it's about a a, a guy who is a, a good example of what a true uh, Christian missionary can look like. He went and evangelized to the people who were his enemies and stole him from his family. So our holidays are a time to remember something yeah. and hopefully point you um, in some ways more to Christ and to remember, you know, more than just the present moment, think broader about life, about past, about future, about what you're called to. Um, so a holiday, you know, like Christmas is easy to do that with. Um, in some ways we're like, oh, this is all about Jesus or Easter, you know, but then you get into some of the, the other holidays where it can become a little bit more difficult. And I feel like that's why St. Patrick's Day is so probably just overlooked in a lot of people. It's like, what even are we celebrating? But if you can stop and think like, wow, this holiday has a is celebrated all over America and other countries because of a missionary who was sent to the place that he was taken captive in. Like, wow, that shows you a lot about, you know, the heart of a believer, the heart of someone who follows Christ, as well as like how God can change someone. And so yeah. when you see all those funny things, like um, we, we recorded this podcast on Monday and then on <laughs> Tuesday I went to, uh, um, I went to a store and I saw like a little four leaf clover or whatever. And I was like, and it like reminded me about Christ and about my calling and about what I'm called to. I was like, Oh wow, this is, this yeah. is kind of cool. So now that you're seeing this on Wednesday, hopefully you can uh, have a few more moments to do that with. So, I think, too, I know that um, students at the Florence campus and the Independence campus were doing a teaching series in the book of Jonah. And I, as I've been thinking about St. Patrick, I've been con- contrasting him with Jonah, Jonah being this angry, bitter missionary. He was a prophet, but called to go call out against Nineveh. And he just ends up, doesn't really want to do it. He runs away, throws a temper tantrum in the end. Contrast that with a guy like St. Patrick. Contrast that with a guy like the Apostle Paul of like what it looks like to be a faithful evangelist and to point others and even in some cases your enemies to Christ. Mm-hmm. And so it could be a good topic of conversation for, with your kids to compare and contrast um, some of those guys. So, yeah. So St. Patrick's Day, fun. I, it was, uh, like you said, Stephen, kind of adds a little nuance to, oh, yeah, when I'm seeing green today, what, what do I think about? Mm-hmm. So that's cool. All right. That's topic number one. Topic two, Stephen, you've got one for us. Yeah. And I'm really excited for this. It's something I'm intrigued by. So this this is our brand new segment called Culture Unload. Here's what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to unload current student culture onto you. That way, just like we're literally just going to explain this to a very small degree just so that you can have a better understanding of what kids are talking about, be able to relate with your kids over it. And when you go into conversations, you have some degree of knowledge about different things that are going on in culture, right? Great. So what would you like me to unload about student culture, Ryan Conlon? Okay, I've been hearing about this thing called Top Shot. Top Shot. Pop Shot? Pop a Shot? Top a Shot? It's hard to know. Okay, so NBA Top Shot is a thing that is uh, currently going on all over um, young people and, and old people probably, but it's basically these digital playing cards from the NBA that students can buy online. So what happens is... They use these things, that's this uh, technology, if you may, called NFTs, which mean non-fudgeable tokens. Fungible. Not fungible. Not non- fudgeable. Um, Fudge covered in chocolate. Works. Depends on how you look at it. <laughs> non-fungible tokens. So there's this, you know, it has to do with blockchain technology and crypto, but basically they make this digital playing card and they give it a like one-of-a-kind digital signature, signature yeah. to where there can't be another one like and it's proven that it belongs to Aaron because yep. Aaron's the only one that owns this this moment so NBA has made this website where they take a moment like LeBron's dunk and they make a highlight of it where he just goes like this over and over again and then they crypto that with a digital signature and then you can go and buy it online for ten dollars but that's like really rare. There's only one of them. That's the biggest moment in history. It's when LeBron dunked it. So another kid's like, man, I really wish I owned LeBron's dunk. And you say to him, like, give me $50. You can own LeBron's dunk. And then you, then you sell it and trade it. So it's basically like trading cards, but you're doing it digitally. And this is like happening more and more with other things. 
So like the other thing that we were talking about is a piece of artwork that's digital, online digital artwork, just sold at auction this week for sixty nine million crazy dollars. A lot of money. Sixty nine million dollars. And it's like you could go and that's the hard thing to get your mind around is like you could go and look it up online and you could look at it. And it's the same thing that that dude's looking at, but he owns it. And <laughs> and it's all online. It's not like he's so like weird. before before if you're listening to this and you're you've already shut off because you're like online money million. What the heck? All you need to know like all you need to know is there is a lot of stuff that's going to be coming up that people are purchasing mm-hmm. that is completely online. There's currency yep. and there are products that are completely online. And I yep. would attach it even to uh, what's that game that everybody played, Fortnite. Yeah. Um, people would buy, spend mm-hmm. tons of money on costumes, on weapons. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was, they had a portfolio within Fortnite that they spent tons of money on. It's going to be like that, but right. even it's now entering in the adult professional collectible markets, collectible and stuff yeah so like with with nfts and buying artwork so at first you're like wait why would you like buy it online i could just look at it online and it's the same thing with like any what other do you artwork do like <laughs> you could print off print you know something that it. looks just like a real print of something but if you don't own the one that has the signature on the bottom that says one of ten then everyone knows that yours is worth nothing and you don't really own anything. Yeah, it's like forge. I mean, there's art yeah. people do that with artwork. Yeah. So it's all of that digitally. All of that is to say, like to parents, like technology and culture, you probably already know this, but is changing so rapidly. And I like get on the news and see different things that are coming up and, and watching just to stay in the loop. And then when I go and talk to kids, like I can bring stuff up and be like, oh, dude, like, are you guys interested in NBA Top Shot? Like, and the kids I talked to said, I don't know what that is. Well, said, well, you're going to know in three weeks. I'll tell you that. So, like, it's one of those things that, like, the only point of sharing it is just, like, give you something that you know a little bit about. If you want, if it's interesting, go research it more. Look into it. Yeah. And talk to your kids about it. And it's going to – it's – technology just grows. You know, look yeah. at the last 10 years, the last 20, the last 30 or 40 years. It's – uh, I mean, technology is crazy and advancing and progressive. And so it's just a matter of time before we see more. But I would say another example is the, um, I don't know the technical term or maybe it's just, it's online land <laughs> <laughs> that, that people can buy What online and, land. Tell me more. <laughs> so virtual land, I guess is what I think the kids were talking about. Uh, I was at a high school hangout and, I overheard kids talking about buying land. It's like, what are you talking about? They were literally looking into purchasing plots of land in New York that were virtual. It's like, sick. And 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 to me, as the adult, I'm like, you guys are a bunch of foolish teenagers. What Mm -hmm. are you doing? But that's that's where I'm disconnected. I think it's a legitimate thing where people are buying virtual land, actual money. Attached to a credit card, like they're paying money and now own a square. I don't know what the dimensions are, but it's it has nothing to do with the actual land. Yeah, but it's virtual and it's it's worth something. Um, so it's it's weird to me, but it, it's it's a thing. Yeah, and like I think that's the hard thing not to to not do is like look at anything that's new or coming up or doesn't really make a ton of sense, and just like bash it mm-hmm. as like something that's really silly or really dumb. Um, that causes more probably disconnects between you and kids yeah. than like seeking to learn about it so or seeking to like it, yeah. explain this to me. Why is this something you'd be interested in? And we look at it, it's like, why would you want to buy digital? Like it's not even real. It's like, well, a dollar bill is not real either, bro. Like <laughs> what's a dollar bill? A dollar bill. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. <laughs> a dollar bill is a piece of paper. Like, but we've assigned value to it. It's Pe- not the spoon. That so like ends. people, assi- what I mean is like, we like <laughs> think something so silly because we don't quite understand it yet, but we've done that with so many other things that sure. like the people before the dollar bill were made, were probably like, what the heck? It's a, that's just a piece of paper. Like I sure. use gold. So all that to be said is like, these are all things that like, they're confusing. It doesn't make sense. Why would you want to buy digital land? But it's rare. It's limited. There's only a certain amount of it. Yeah. And people want and it. And so, like, then it creates value. Yeah. I think that you're right. You're right. And I think the Top Shot thing, it, it's, I asked the question, why is this attractive to people, attractive to students? Well, Top Shot, it's a confluence of things that kids are all drawn to. It's mm-hmm. like sports, technology, even, like, most of the things I see on Top Shot are 
how can I flip this card and make money off of it? Mm -hmm. So it's like, how can I get rich off these things? Yep. And yeah, well, so if they're looking to come yeah. into one thing that they understand and get, and it's new and it's interesting. It's like, oh yeah. And with that, the NBA doing that first, like beginning to sell moments of NBA history, it's only going to like go into all other parts of the world. So I was listening to Barstool Sports talk about this, mm -hmm. and they were talking about how, which is just a sports, an online an online news outlet basically that reports on all sorts of things for like young people culture. Mm -hmm. But basically they were like, you know, this is going to move to like, you could buy the moment when we like fall over, we trip on a video or you could buy the moment that like Logan Paul like falls out. Like, so like there's like, it's going to transcend into lots of different places where you're going to start buying these digital moments and selling them. It'd be kind of cool. Kind of interesting actually. Parents, thank you. We hope we hope this was a little bit enlightening for you. You learn a little bit, have some things to talk to your kids about. We'll catch you next time on the Couch Time Podcast. Peace. Hey, thanks for watching. You can follow us on Instagram at the Couch Time Podcast. Let us know what you thought about the podcast. Also, let us know if there's any topics or things you'd like us to cover. You can comment and email us at podcast at graceky.org. Please like, subscribe, and share the video with other parents.